finding the best graphics cards while avoiding CPU bottlenecks. Guys, today I'm gonna to review an ASUS TUF gaming graphics card from NVIDIA, the RTX 4080. That's a pretty big, massive, powerful card. But as you may know, there could be the potential for CPU bottlenecks if you pair that RTX 4080 with a CPU that doesn't have enough computing power. And I built three test systems for this purpose to test the uh, graphics card, the ASUS TUF Gaming, with three different CPUs. On the one hand, the very weak and older AMD 5600X. I mean, weak is relative, but the AMD 5800X3D, in this case with the dedicated X3D cache, is definitely more suitable. But I also built an AM5 system and we are gonna quickly start Cyberpunk and bump up the settings to Ray Tracing Ultra. I like the Ray Tracing Ultra, especially with the RTX 4070. That was the previous video when I tested the RTX 4070. For this test, I'm always using the preset like I did in my previous RTX 4060, 70 and now the 4080 review. Um, we are still using the entry level Ryzen 5600X, which is it's a good processor. I like that processor, especially when pairing it with an RTX 4060. With the 4070, it was like a little bit on the edge. You were noticing with the 4070 a slight bottleneck. But as you can see with the 4080, the bottleneck now really becomes pronounced because the CPU utilization is relatively high and the graphics cards utilization drops further and further 70 percent that's pretty bad 68 that's pretty bad so guys as you can see there's a definite bottleneck going on with the rtx 4080 so you really must have an x3d cache cpu or a more powerful cpu to avoid these bottlenecks situations yes it is true if we look at the benchmarks that when you lower the graphic cards setting, you're moving the bottleneck towards the CPU versus you increase the graphics settings, you're moving the bottleneck more towards the GPU. So that always uh, should give you also an indicator if you play games very competitive with high frame rates, always get a X3D cache CPU. Um, in this case, if we look at the benchmarks, uh, we see that the uh, old AM4 X3D even outperformed the much more expensive AMD 7950 X3D. That's probably because that's a 16 uh, core CPU, a little bit more geared towards productivity tasks. But nonetheless, it was an X3D bumping up the settings to the WQHD resolution. You can see definitely, again, bottleneck uh, going on with the entry-level AM4 CPUs such as the Ryzen 5600X. And uh, to my surprise, the FPS are exactly almost the same if we look at the Ray Tracing Ultra 77 FPS. Um, that's about approximately the same FPS as you would get with that CPU in an RTX 4070. But as soon as you remove that CPU bottleneck and you take a CPU with X3D cache, you see you are 110 or 114 FPS, even in relatively high graphics settings. So that really makes sense. And it's also very intuitive. The more powerful your graphics card, the more powerful your CPU should be. But here you have seen some concrete examples with three systems and cost comparison wise. The AM4 system one cost me approximately $260, 130 for the board, 130 for the CPU, and it yields me 77 FPS, a combination I would not recommend. Then test system two, also AM4, but a X3D cache CPU that was more expensive. I think these X3D cache CPUs like the 5800X, they were $270, something like that. You get a respectable 114 FPS. That would be still a good, acceptable combination. Then we come to the AM5 system and you see that system was total overkill. It cost $1,000 just for the board and the CPU. I think the CPU was $600, the board was $400. Very expensive, virtually no gain in FPS. Of course, that is an extreme example. You do not have to build by no means an AM4 system for that 
kind of price. You can also build an AM4 system for $400. Uh, that's very feasible. ASOS has very nice boards in the entry level segment as well. Uh, for example, with the B650 chipset. So that's another consideration where you could also run into issues if you have older boards, uh, if you have older CPUs, for example, that only have PCIe 3.0, the graphics card is pretty powerful, so I would also recommend you please make sure that your main board and CPU both support PCIe 4.0 so that you get the maximum bandwidth out of here. And if you buy a new system, I think the B650 from AM5, that's a very good uh, entry level solution that also will yield you good performance if you pair it with the right processor. So guys, what's my conclusion? The ASUS TOF Gaming RTX 4080 is a really awesome card. Lots of memory, super powerful. Uh, just make sure you don't pair it with a weaker CPU because then you will have a bottleneck and you don't get your money's worth out of that graphics card. Otherwise, for me personally, the 4080, while it's really amazing, is a little bit overkill. You have to be a serious gamer, uh, play in high res, really want these high frame rates, maybe competitively gaming. Um, for a casual person. Guys, for me personally, I'm very happy with a 4070 and I'm even happy with a 4060. Uh, if you just play a little bit here and there, a 4060 also totally sufficient. But uh, yeah, coming up, we're also gonna do some more graphics cards uh, battles, maybe some AMD versus Nvidia. We'll also look at the different uh, models going head to head. Those were some initial benchmarks. Guys, hit that subscribe. Let me know what uh, graphics cards, uh, comparisons, battles you want to see. And I see you as a subscriber in the next video.